Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're doing well. Welcome to another video and welcome back to day 10 of 12 Days of Bookmas. I'm very excited to be sharing yet another video with you guys. Again, I don't do recommendation videos very often, but I feel like now that I've hit my like 400 bookmark and I've read a ton of different things, I feel like I can definitely do some recommendations at this point. So I'm sitting down to finally do a recommendation of my favorite fantasies that I think that everyone should read and give a chance at some point in their lives. Uh, I have some middle grade, I have adult, I have YA on here. I have some quintessential fantasies and I have some ones that I feel like aren't talked about enough, um, but I definitely have some good recommendations for you. So I have a ton to talk about. So if you're gonna stick around with me for the entire video, I recommend that you grab a snack, a drink, get cozy, and let's talk about the top fantasies that I recommend. Okay, so I separated these into sections. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about quintessential fantasies that I feel like everybody talks about and I feel like they're worth the hype. Uh, I'm gonna do another set of newer books that I feel like are talked about quite a bit, but maybe you haven't heard about them because they are a little bit newer or um, their sequels are starting to come out and a lot more people are getting to know them a little bit more. And then the last section are ones that I feel like I don't hear enough about and or don't hear anything about and I feel like you should definitely give them a go. The first one that we're going to talk about is Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Um, I feel like this is a quintessential middle grade that every person should read. I think this is one of the best middle grade series out there, um, especially because it is an older series. It was published quite a bit ago and everything still stands pretty true. There are some things that are quite timely in this series, but for the most part, I think that it's a really fantastic series with some really amazing writing, an awesome friend group, and I think that the hero, or not the hero, but the, um, the chosen one trope is done really well in this. The books can kind of get repetitive, so I don't recommend reading them back to back to back, but I feel like they are a fun series and it's just something to get you going, a light, quick, and easy read, but also like a really good, solid middle grade. If you don't know what this is about, this one follows Percy Jackson, who is a young preteen who is just coming into his own, but he finds out that he is a demigod, which is half human, half god, and he goes to this camp called Camp Half Blood to help train him with his magical abilities, but he's trying to learn and figure out who his father is and how he became to be a half-blood, but he's also thrown into this chosen one trope with, with a prophecy that kind of depicts how the rest of his life is going to go, but it's all kind of veiled under riddles and rhymes, and you're trying to figure out what's going on, and you follow him and his friend group, um, Grover and Annabelle, Annabeth? Anna, how do we call her Annabelle? It's Annabeth, um, over the, the, the next five books, and it's just such a great ride. I de definitely recommend it. The next one we're going to talk about is a series that I feel like everybody talks about, and this one is very polarizing. Either you like it or you don't. I think that the series as a whole was really good, and if you are looking for a very simple and easy fantasy, I would pick up the Cruel Prince series by Holly Black or the Folk of the Air series. I think this is a really great, easy, middle-of-the-road YA fantasy. There's not a ton of extensive world building, but you also have a very interesting fantasy backdrop with the fey world that you are kind of thrown into alongside the characters. Um, it is a hate to love romance that has a very cruel um, hero at the center, anti-hero, however you want to talk about it. But um, I think that is a very interesting series. And if you like this type of romance and this type of fantasy, I think this is a really good one. This one follows Jude and her two sisters who are kidnapped from the human world and taken to the fairy world by one of the sisters half uh, one of the sisters' dad, so they are half-sisters, but n none of them knew about the fairy world before this, and they are now humans forced to thrive or try to thrive in a fairy world, which is very frowned upon. Humans are very frowned upon. They are very um, looked down upon, and so you're following Jude, who wants to become, like, um, a knight or something like that um, to, like, protect the kingdom, and she wants to prove that she can be a part of this world and not be taken advantage of. And she ends up into some precarious situations and as well as a romance at the center, so an interesting one for sure. Not my favorite one out of this list, but it's definitely a good one. By the way, I also try to recommend books that I've either read the entire series or read at least two of the books in the series. That way I can give, like, a sound recommendation. There's only one book in this quintessential list that I haven't read both of the books, but we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> Up next is another fantasy. We're moving on to the adult side though, and I feel like a lot of people talk about this one. And again, I feel like now that I'm hearing more about it, it's very hit or miss, either you love it or you don't. And that is the Never Night series by Jay Kristoff. I personally loved this series so much. I've only read books one and two. I still need to read the last book in the series, but I think it's just such a good, interesting, dark, grim fantasy, and I think that it's so well done. I know that for a lot of people, what throws them off is the writing style. The footnotes are not for everybody, and I totally understand that. That was something that I really thought was going to freak me out when I first started reading these, this series, but I personally really enjoy it. The footnotes add some extra world building, which can kind of be uh, info dumpy if 
you don't like that then maybe don't read this but it also adds like a lot of humor and a very interesting like fourth wall breaking situation which i really really enjoyed and i just like jake christoph's writing to begin with this one follows miyoko corvair who is set out to get revenge on her family and to kill the men that killed her family and so she goes into this assassin school to learn how to be an assassin to then carry out her revenge schemes. And she gets caught up in a lot of um, political intrigue and a lot of interesting situations throughout this journey. And I really enjoyed it so far. Uh, Mia is a very, very complex character with a lot of different things going on. And sometimes you don't know whether you want to love her or whether you want to hate her, but it's a fun series nonetheless. This is the one series in this list so far that I have not read both books. And it is a duology, so I, that's the reason why I felt like I could... Uh, include it and that is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Again, another one that everyone talks about. I will not be recommending Shadow and Bone. Um, not because I haven't read the first and second book. Well, I have read the first one. I haven't read the second one. Um, but because I don't think that it's as good as Six of Crows. I think this is definitely her better work of the two. Um, I really love the characters of Six of Crows and I really think that the uh, interesting backdrop for a heist is really well done in the story. I love the characters. I love the found family aspect and I love just the way that everything played out in this first book. I do still need to read the second one, which I heard is even better than the first. So I'm really excited to get around to this one. This one follows six criminals who all get together to perform a heist to ba basically break into the most uh, secured prison to get out a valuable aspect. I'm not going to spoil anything, but um, I think that it's a really, really well done book. If you've watched the Shadow and Bone TV show, this is definitely a different storyline for them. Um, they took some liberties with the Sh Six of Crows um, storyline, but I think that this book is fantastic. If you've already watched the TV show and haven't read the book, I highly suggest going into it because it is such a good start to a series. Then we're going to talk about some novellas, which are also adult, and we're going to talk about Every Hotter Doorway or The Wayward Children series by Sean McGuire. I personally love these novellas. I heard so many people talking about them when I first started booktube, and I just couldn't stay away from them. And now that I have have read a good majority of them. I've read five, four? Four out of the six that are currently published. Maybe five out of the six that are currently published. I'm not sure. I've read quite a bit of them and I've loved almost every single one of them. There's only one that I rated a three star, but everything else has been a four and above. I think they are such fun books. They follow these children who, um, open doors into portal worlds that allow them to go into a world where they feel like they can be themselves and have really honed in on what they're looking for in life. But for some reason or another, they get sent out of their portal world back into the human world and um, they're forced to kind of reacclimate and they go to Eleanor's home for wayward children to do so, but they spend a lot of their time trying to figure out ways to get back to their doors. I really love these stories. I think they are so much fun. They offer a very grim, dark, but also a very cheery, interesting look at different portal worlds. I think they're so much fun. So if you get a chance to read these, I highly recommend. This is a quintessential fantasy author in general. I feel like almost everybody, if not most people, have read at least one of her books, and that is Cassandra Clare. I'm going to be recommending The Infernal Devices. I think that uh, of the two series that I've read of hers, this one is definitely the superior one. Uh, it is a trilogy, and I really just, I loved the characters in this. Um, I think that the Shadowhunter world is definitely a little bit outplayed. I think that she just needs to leave this world and move on to something else, but I will say that I really did enjoy this particular series. This one follows Will, Gem, and Tessa, who are um, kind of thrown together in Un unlikely circumstances and they're forced to work together to solve this big bad plot that's going on in the background. It's kind of hard to explain these books actually but shadow hunters are basically demon hunters who um, hunt down demons that aren't supposed to be in uh, their world and Tessa is the only um, human of the three and there's a love triangle going on but you also have this really interesting found family aspect between all the people that uh, live at this um, institute that they're currently at. I think this one's set in London maybe? Um, I really liked it. I think it's a really interesting fantasy series and for me I'm not a huge love triangle person but I absolutely loved the love triangle in here and I think that it worked out so well. So high props to Cassie Clare for doing that one. Okay and the last one that I'm going to get to before the ones that you guys are ob obviously expecting um, and that is Number in the Ashes by Sabatier. I think this is a fantastic series. It's one of my favorite series that I have read to date. I think that the fact that Sabatier was willing to get so dark and so gritty with her fantasy world is something that I love personally in a YA fantasy. I feel like a lot of YA writers are just a little bit afraid to get, you know, a little dark, to kill off some characters, you know, to hurt our feelings a little bit. And I love when it happens in a YA book. I always give mad props to the writers for doing that. Um, I just think that it it works. So um, this one follows Alaya and Elias. No. Laya and Elias. That, that was better. Um, Elias is currently at Blackcliff training to be a guard um they're called the masks and uh he really doesn't like the position that he's in he doesn't like the world that he lives in it's a very cruel and dark place and he just has a really soft heart and wants to get away from this facility but um he ends up in an interesting situation when Laya's parents uh, actually her grandparents 
get killed and her brother is kidnapped and placed into a prison and she is forced to um, sneak into Blackcliff to become a spy and Laya and Elias's past kind of cross and it creates a lot of chaos from there. I love the first and second book in the series. I'm excited for book three. I think the series is so well done and I'm highly, highly looking forward to reading the rest of the series. I've heard nothing but good things. And if you haven't checked this out already, you definitely should. All right, let's do it all in one fell swoop. Serge and Mass. Uh, I would be amiss if I didn't recommend these as fantasy recommendations. I think that these are all fantastic fantasy books. Uh, the first one it being A Court of Thorns and Roses. Obviously, yes, 100%. I think these are amazing. I love the Beauty and the Beast retelling. I love the Hades and Persephone retelling. I love everything about the series. I love these characters, the found family. I'm excited to continue on with this world and I think that it's fantastic. I will stop gushing about this, I promise. <laughs> then we have Crescent City. You guys all know my favorite book of all time. I'm not gonna gush about it, but I do love everything about this book series, characters, plot, everything. Like literally there's not a single thing that I can point out that I didn't like about the series or the first book in the series. Am I excited for book two? Absolutely, you already know it. And then of course we have Throne of Glass. This is the one series that Sarah J. Mass has written that I have not finished, which believe me, I'm rectifying that in 2022, okay? I have a read-along going at the start of the year. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna finish them all. It's gonna be wonderful. I can finally stop being ashamed that I haven't finished this series. But I will say that what I have read, I can definitely say that I highly, highly recommend it. I think it's such a fun series. And if you haven't read it already, do it. Okay, next we're gonna talk about some of the newer books that I feel like were recently released and definitely need to be talked about or their sequels were recently released and I feel like they belong in this list. I could be wrong about some of these. Maybe some of these were released a long time ago, but they feel new to me. So the first one that I'm gonna talk about is The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. Honestly, this is one of the most surprising books that I've read this year because I really thought that I was going to like it. I wanted to like it because the book is gorgeous, but I didn't think that I was going to love it. And I absolutely fell in love with this book. I love the premise. I loved the writing. I loved the characters. Everything about this totally worked for me. This one follows Clara, who is an Everwitch, and basically um, each season has specific witches that thrive in that season. So if you're a winter witch, you thrive in winter, uh, along for all of the seasons. And as the seasons change, the um, person that is in that season, they start to thrive, and then the other witches kind of, their powers are lessened. They don't have zero powers, but they just are not as powerful. Clara, however, is an Everwitch, which means that she can possess all four seasons of power, and so she's the most powerful witch of all time as of right now. There are no other Everwitches in existence, and so she's kind of forced to use her magic to help stabilize climate, the climate, because things are really uh, starting to deteriorate because of climate change, and um, it's on her to really take action and boost all the other people up so that they can help to maintain a proper climate. Um, however, Clara is really afraid of her magic and she is trying to figure out how to move past that fear. And it's just a really gorgeous story. You also have a love at the a love story at the center of this that I think that was so beautiful and so well done and so whimsical and so magical. Highly, highly recommend this. This is such an atmospheric book and if you like books like that but also have a really interesting fantasy backdrop, I think that you will really, really enjoy this one. Okay, the next one I'm going to talk about is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I think this is a fantastic, cozy, middle grade for adults. It's just such a good fantasy. This one has a little bit more contemporary vibes to me in regards to the writing but it is definitely a fantasy um you are dealing with linus baker who works at the department um in charge of magical youth and he is sent on a case to go to this house um to take a look at the orphanage and all the children there as well as the man that's looking after these children and make sure that they are um in a safe home, but also safe for the community outside of this home. And as you go there, you find out that these magical children are very different and very special. And you follow, follow Linus Baker as he tries to keep a level head and figure out how to judge these kids without becoming attached. And it's just a wonderful story. It's also LGBTQI+. I think that it's so, so cute. Every time I think about this book, it brings a smile to my face. If you haven't already read this, I highly recommend this. Um, I love TJ Klune as a writer. I think that he's a fantastic writer. Everything that I have read by him, I have absolutely loved. So if you were thinking about giving this a go, I highly, highly recommend it. Let's talk about an actual middle grade, and that is Nevermore by Jessica Townsend, the first book in the Trials of Morgan Crow series. I fucking love this middle grade so much. I think that it's beautiful. I think it's so well done. I love it so much. I don't know when this book was published, but I know the new newer books are still currently being published. It's published in 2017, so not too um, new, but not super old either. Um, but I think this middle grade is so freaking amazing. I love every single character. I love the animal companions. I love the magic system. I just love this character as a whole, and I will root for her until the freaking very end. But this one basically follows Morgan Crow, who is um, cursed to die on the eve of her 11th birthday. And because of her curse, everyone in town thinks that everything that goes wrong is Morgan's fault. And so um, on the eve of her 11th birthday, she ends up being 
put into a bidding. It's called Bidding Day, and she gets bid on by a man named Jupiter North, who ends up whisking her away from the town and the world that she lives in to this beautiful, magical town called Nevermore, where she's learning all about this new magic, but she's also thrust into a competition where she is forced to try to get into the Wondrous Society, um, but everyone in the Wondrous Society has a knack, but Morgan doesn't know what hers is. And it's a really fantastic first book. The plot really devolves, dev I always say devolves, but I don't think that's the right word, evolves, evolves from there. I just think that it's fantastic. It's such a cute middle grade and I just love it so much. So definitely recommend it if you haven't already picked this one up. Let's stay on that same vein and talk about Amari and the Night Brothers. I've recently mentioned this one in my if you like this then you'll like this one and I recommend that if you like Nevermore then you should read Amari and the Night Brothers or vice versa and I think this one is just such a beautiful middle grade as well and I love the fact that it's written by a black author about black main characters and it's just such a wonderful book that talks about race and microaggressions and um, racism as a whole, but it's also put into a well-digested, easily to understand middle grade format. I think it's so amazing. Um, this one follows Amari, whose brother has gone missing, and she's determined to figure out what happened to her brother. Um, so she goes, she gets, she finds a briefcase that's taking in her brother's closet that invites her to the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs, and she goes there to learn about this world and figure out this new magic world and her powers alongside of it, but also figure out what happened to her brother. It's a fantastic story. Definitely read it. It's one of my favorite books of all of the entire year. I think that it's fantastic and I cannot wait for the sequel. Up next, we have Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nian. I know this one is recently published, I believe, but um, the third and final book in the series just recently came out. So that's the reason why I'm recommending this one. This one was published in 2018. So again, not super old, but not super new either. Um, and this is a female female uh, fantasy that is definitely a lot darker. So be aware of that when you go into this one. This one does, does deal with sexual assault um, in a very highly talked about capacity. So be aware of that if that's something that's triggering for you. But this one follows Lee, Lai, Lee. Um, and she's a paper girl, which is like the lowest of the low in regards to this caste system. And the paper girls are chosen um, once a year to become concubines for the king. And she is stolen from her home and forced to become a concubine for the king. But during that time, she falls in love with another one of the paper girls that's there. And they are planning a revolution. It's a fantastic book. I didn't love the second book because it was supposed to be a duology and they stretched it to a trilogy. And the second book definitely showed that. But I do think that this series as a whole is really well done. This is the one that gets really dark and really gritty, which again, I love. So I'm really excited to see what they do with the rest of this series. I know the third book came out recently, so I definitely will have to pick it up soon, but hopefully I love it. And if you haven't picked this up, I definitely think they should give it a try. These ones are definitely new. Both of these came out, I believe, either this year or last year. The first one being A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth. This one is also LGBTQI+. Actually, the last two books I'm going to talk about are LGBTQI+. This one is very queer. There's a lot of um, talk about pronouns and gender fluidity, as well as um, just a lot of LGBTQI plus topics, which I absolutely loved. It's set in a very interesting fantasy back backdrop. It's set in Toronto. In my last video, I said it was set in Seattle. It's not correct. It's set in Toronto. <laughs> and um, it's kind of like an underground fey world that the humans don't really know about. Um, and you're dealing with a very interesting... Uh, situation that's going on within their world. Uh, people are dying and philosopher's stones are trying to be created and made. And you're dealing with this very interesting fantasy. I don't want to talk too much about it because I don't want to spoil anything because I think I might actually spoil anything if I talk too much more. But the characters are fantastic. You're following four characters. And I'll just read the little blurb here. It says, choose your player. The ironborn half fae outcast from her royal family and tempestuous fury exiled from earth exiled to earth from the immortal realm and hellbent on revenge a dutiful fey prince determined to earn his place on the throne and the prince's brooding guardian burdened with a terrible secret like that's all you really need to know go in it's fantastic i just recommend this this one recently to those fa uh, fans of sarah j mass so if you like sarah j mass i think you'll really like this one and the last book we're going to talk about in this category is legend born by tracy dion again another lgbtqi plus book this is an arthurian retelling um and i loved this book this has so many interesting things to it you have a teenage girl who is going to like this college course it's not really a college because she's still in high school but it's like early college situation her mother has just recently died and she is really reeling and grieving from that but um she ends up in this world where she learns that monsters um, and demons exist and she kept, keeps stumbling upon it and through that she ends up stumbling upon this secret society that is built upon Arthur's of the Round Table but she's also learning a lot more about her heritage and her mother and um, she finds out that maybe these people had something to do with her mother's uh, death and so you're really following that but you're also dealing with racism and 
there's a lot of talk of um homophobia as well um and there's just just some really interesting conversations in here i think that it was super well done systemic racism is talked about so well in this book and i just loved every second of it i think that it's a fantastic book and i'm so excited for book two okay the last and final section that we're going to talk about today is going to be books that i don't hear enough about that i think are fantastic book series fantasy series um the first one that i'm going to talk about is a booktuber shout out and that is katie wismer's first book in her series the marionettes the second book has recently just been released um Wicked Souls. I almost forgot the name. I'll put the picture on the screen. Gorgeous covers. But this one follows Valerie Darkmore, who um, is training, has been training all her life basically to become a marionette. And basically, a marionette is a witch who um, helps to maintain the balance between witches and vampires. And she is the last of the Darkmoors. So there's a lot of pressure up upon her. But as her trials begin, she realized that something interesting and very dark is happening to her, as well as surrounding these trials. And she's trying to figure out what's happening. There's also um, a very slow burn romance at the center of this book that I really, really enjoyed. I'm really looking forward to the second book. I think that it's so interesting. It was a fast paced fantasy and the second book is supposed to be really, really good. So I'm really excited for this one. But if you haven't checked this out and if you haven't checked out Kitty Wismer as an author, definitely do so. She writes some really fantastic books and I love supporting smaller um, self-published authors as well as booktubers so definitely check her out. Another series that I don't hear enough about on booktube, I, I've definitely heard people talking about it but not as much as I feel like people should and that is the Black Dagger Brotherhood series by J.R. Ward. My ring light is just, it just loves this book. This is actually the second book in the series, not the first book but I don't own the first book so this is what I have to show you and this is a um, vampire romance, adult romance series um, that follow different characters every book but it follows around the same central plot. Basically, you have the Black Dagger Brotherhood who are a group of vampires that are tasked with keeping the vampire species alive, um, but you're also dealing with faded mate stories with every character. And I just think that they are so much fun, so easy to fly through. They have great smut. I think they're just a fun ride all around. And if you're looking for a good, easy to read vampire um, faded mate situation, I highly, highly recommend the series. Another one that I don't hear enough about, and I don't know if it's just because it was published quite a long time ago, or what, but that is the Wrath and the Dawn duology by Renee Audier. I know that The Beautiful has been getting some mixed reviews by her, but this duology is so good. It's so freaking good. And I definitely think that you should read this. This is um, a, a Arabian Nights retelling, I think, um, or A Thousand and One Nights, I forget, but it's a retelling, um, it's a duology. And you're following Khalid, who is the, um, 18 year old like king and basically every year he takes a bride and the bride never makes it past the next day she always dies he's always forced to kill his brides and you are following um Shahrazad who has become his newest bride and she wants to be picked because she wants to go and kill him because her best friend was recently taken as a bride and she died and so she is hellbent on revenge and her only way of staying alive is telling these um Khalid, I keep forgetting his name, is telling telling him stories. And so you follow that. It definitely is a much larger pl plot from there. Um, it is a romance story. It's a hate to love romance story. So I think that it was a really beautifully well done duology. I loved it so much. I love the writing. And if you haven't picked this up, I highly suggest you do so. It is a duology. So it's quick and easy. And it's such a fun time. Okay, TJ Klune is back. And I'm going to recommend Wolf Song by TJ Klune. Oh my god. This is the first book in the Green Creek series. And I am obsessed. I am obsessed with this book series. I'm currently reading the third book right now and I'm literally like dying inside. I'm dying inside uh, every time I pick it up because TJ Klune has literally grabbed my heart and just like forced it with these characters because there is no way you cannot love them after reading the first book in the series. It's just so well done. I never like to talk about the synopsis of this book. Every time I've talked about it I just say that it involves gay werewolves and that's all you need to know. Like literally that's it. Go in blind. Don't read the back. Just jump into this book and I swear you will not be disappointed. It has the most beautiful writing. It's very lyrical and flowery. So if you don't like that writing, maybe you won't like it. But I think that it was so beautifully well done. And it's just such a beautiful story all around. Uh, each book follows different characters f around the same uh, characters, but they follow different perspectives. And oh my god, it's just gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's everything that I could have wanted. And I will literally die, die on a hill, on a mountain, on a rock, something for these characters. Like, it's amazing. Highly recommend it. Please read it. Another series that I love to recommend, and that is the Bergener series by Laura Thalassa, the first book being Rhapsodic. This one is a very interesting um, series. Ah, I love so much. It definitely reminds me of Sarah J Mass. Again, one that I mentioned in, yes, last the last video that I did. Um, and if you like this, then you'll like this. Um, I just, I love it so much. This one follows Calypso. 
uh, yes, who is a siren. And she has a very big issue at the beginning of this book. Basically, she killed her father. And she is in a situation and she needs help out. So she calls to the bargainer. And the bargainer is a very well known, like, being of this world that is known for um taking on deals but when he comes to collect payments on these deals they are very steep and you just you don't want them um however after uh calypso first runs into the bargainer she ends up creating a relationship with him and um not a relationship that you think they're just really close friends and somehow she ends up with thousands and thousands and thousands of deals owed to the bargainer and then he disappears from her life for years and comes back years later and calypso is sitting there wondering why is he back and what is he going to do to collect on those bargains and oh my gosh it's so interesting you also are in a very interesting urban fantasy backdrop um you have a world filled with very different um supernatural beings so you have fairies you have calypso who's a siren um lots of different things going on so it's a very fun series lots of political intrigue going on as well you have a whole new world that you get to explore and i think that's such a fun series so if you're interested in this i highly recommend picking it up another series that i feel like is not talked about enough and that is the kingdom card series the first one being where dreams ascend by janela angelis i know that the first book was talked about a ton when it first came out and then i haven't really heard anything about the sequel the sequel or the end of this duology and i think that it's such a fantastic series or duology um this one follows kalia who um is you first meet her at hellfire house where she is performing on a stage in front of lots of people and she loves this she loves performing and she thinks that this is where she wants to be but she doesn't like being held and confined to her house by the gatekeeper named jack so she runs away and she goes to the city named glorian where they are having a competition between magicians and she ends enters this competition to prove that not only can she do this but as a woman she can be a great magician and um, so you're in, entered, entered into this very interesting competition where things turn very bad very quick. You Once you enter this competition, there's no way to get out. Once you enter the city, there's no way to get out. And people start disappearing left and right. But you also have a romance between Do um, Kalia and one of the judges of this competition, DeMarco. And oh my god, everything about this was atmospheric and beautiful. I love the writing. I love any magical competition to begin with. And this just was so much fun to read about. The second book, I feel like it's even better. I really enjoyed it and I'm so glad that I read it. So if you haven't picked this up, definitely do so. All right, I feel like I talk about this series a lot, but that is The Last Magician series by Lisa Maxwell. I love, I repeat, I love this book series. I love the first book the most out of all three books that I have read. There are currently only three published. The last book is set to be published next year, so I'm really excited to read up, read the conclusion. And the books get chunkier and chunkier as you go on, <laughs> so prepare yourselves for that. But this is such a fun series. Definitely not something that I thought that I was going to like because it is majority majority of the book is set in the past. So I, you know, I'm not a book reader that likes to read about anything set in the past but this works for me oh my gosh the writing the characters the logic behind this book series is fantastic so basically you're following esta and esta has the ability to stop and pull time but with an artifact she's able to time travel and she's sent into the past by her professor to steal a book that is supposed to bring down the brink and this brink is like a magical world wor ward i can't say that word a magical ward around new york city that um makes it so that any mage or people with magic is not able to pass through that ward and if they try to they either die or they're shipped to their magic and the first book follows this heist of trying to steal this book and to travel between timelines and trying to figure out all the lies and secrets that everybody is telling but you're also uh, following multiple different perspectives over multiple different timelines throughout this entire series and it's kind of convoluted and confusing when you think about it but lisa max maxwell makes it so approachable and just so well done i love it it's fantastic highly recommend pick up the series the second to the last book that i'm going to talk about thank god is pet by quick Amazi. i don't want to talk about this one too much because it is a very short book and i don't want to spoil anything but let me see i don't want to forget their name but um you have jam who um whose mother is a painter and basically one day she stumbles into her mother's um studio and ends up pulling out a monster from this painting and this monster is saying that he must haunt down a monster from this world however problem with that is everyone in this world knows that monsters no longer exist however um I believe his name is pet pet is convinced and is telling jam there is a monster in this in this town and i need to eradicate it and you follow their journey of figuring that out this is a huge huge metaphor for the world that we live in and i think that it was so fantastically well done in a short amount of pages for me to fall in love with these characters and this world and the story so much it's just astronomically blows my mind every time if you have not read this please please do it is so so good and the last book that i'm going to talk about i feel like i talk about it a lot but i don't hear anybody else talk about it and that is nocturna by maya motain this is such a cool fantasy book and i feel like it is definitely um 
a book that I feel like most people can connect with. I really enjoyed it and I really love the characters. I think that it's just such a fun fantasy altogether and the writing style was just so well done. This follows Alfie whose brother has recently died under mysterious circumstances. However, he's convinced that her, his brother is still alive and so he keeps going out of the palace and on journeys to figure out how to bring his brother back. And during that time, he ends up running into a very well-known thief named uh, Finn and they end up being stuck together trying to save their kingdom from this very dark and chaotic strain of magic that is running rampant throughout the city cast by one particular um, man and it's a very very interesting story you have a lot of interesting things going on and I absolutely loved the magic system uh Finn who is the uh thief is able to shapeshift her face and her body and oh my god it's just so cool to think about I cannot wait to read book two I'm supposed to be reading it this month so cross my fingers hope that I can but we shall see um but yeah I'm really really excited to get around to book two and if you haven't already picked up the series I highly recommend it I think that a lot of people will really enjoy this one. Oh my god we did it we made it to the end thank the lord i love fantasy and i feel like i i feel, I feel like i've made some really good recommendations here this is a very long list so i feel like this is something that you guys can go back on back to um over the next year because i'm not doing this again for a long while and um find books that hopefully will uh tickle your fancy and bring you joy like they have brought me joy i hope that is the case but um that is the end of this video if you made it to the end and you don't know what to comment leave a dragon emoji I feel like that's very apt for a fantasy uh, recommendations video. Also, let me know down in the comments below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, as well as any fantasy series that you think that I should read that I am sorely missing out on. I would love to hear your thoughts. So yes, leave a dragon emoji if you made it to the end of this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And of course, leave any comments, questions, and suggestions in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.